What's up guys? We just did our first service on our Honda Talon. Uh, a little late, a couple hours over, a couple miles over, but no big deal. Everything still looked nice and clean. Um, been a while since we posted a video and I should have made a video of us actually performing the service, but I didn't and uh, figured I think it was kind of an afterthought, figured screw it, what the hell. So first and foremost, the first service, um, what I ended up doing was going a little bit overboard. I changed engine oil, I changed sub transmission oil, and I changed both of the uh, final drive oil and the rear and front diff. The only thing Honda tells you to do is engine and front and rear diffs, but uh, I figured screw it. While I'm at it, might as well do the sub -trans transmission oil. So we did that. As far as that's concerned, um, it, was, it took me a little longer than I would have liked and it made a hell of a mess. And I even had rags and everything down here, but basically right there is your uh, your engine oil dipstick to check the level there. But to drain, you've got two points on the underside, which was kind of a pain, kind of made me want to lift. But uh, two down there, you've got uh, one for your main case, one for the oil pan, and then there's also your uh, sub-transmission uh, drain plug that's down there as well. Um, so yeah, that just kind of made a mess. Had to stuff some rags in there. I cleaned it up the best I could, but I'm still expecting to see a little bit of oil, oil come out over the days. And then the rear diff, rear diff, you see that lower drain bolt right there. And then the upper, uh, you basically just want to take both those out. And then you got a little sight plug on the side, fill it up until it comes out of right there. And it's really pretty much the same in the front. Only difference in the front, is that you don't have that little side plug you just go up to that top to the, to the uh fill plug and on the front it's actually in the bottom so we're gonna drain that through so that was pretty much that we're pretty much ready now um i know the last video there's jackson jackson how happy are you with this thing uh, yeah you think it's pretty gnarly yeah, yeah? jackson's happy also but, um before this we had like a couple weeks ago, we were not sure what the battery is in. Let's just say that the talent out much. Oh, it got real dirty. We worked that bad boy, didn't we? Well, so the other thing, dad, remember... Go ahead, my buddy. My dad decided to not hit it on the tubes in your old bedroom. <laughs> you got to call me out like that, huh? Yeah. Wasn't trying to break nothing. Didn't want to take out a control arm. It was pretty rocky at the bottom. But honestly, in hindsight, I could have did it. Just also, did, why trying we were, to baby it. Also, while we were there, this guy took his dirt bike through it. Yeah, it didn't end too well, did it? His engine got flooded. And his engine got locked up. Yeah. Guy took a dirt bike through the tubes. <laughs> Didn't end too well. But anyway, so last time I left you guys off, I was I had my mods and I said I was done. Uh, I lied. Since then, we added a second battery setup. I got a nice battery tray. Jackson's enjoying his new driveway. We just finally got pavement after a long time of gravel. Crazy kid. So like I was saying, I ordered a battery tray from CA Technologies, bolted up real nice, real easy. Um, added a second auxiliary battery with a key line battery isolator right here. So basically what that does is the entire fuse distribution center is coming off of the second battery. So that way you can sit around the fire, you can listen to the radio, you can, uh, all your accessories are coming off that battery. You never have to, you know, the starting battery, the original factory battery that's on the Talon is just for factory components. It's just for exactly what it was designed for. It keeps the system separate. For what it cost, I really felt like it was just a lot of peace of mind. These Talon's got a lot of uh, electrical sensors, a lot of the things with the shifting and the transmission. You good? You want, all right. So I just figured, hey, better safe than sorry. Also, so that's the second battery setup. That's the battery isolator. That's pretty much it here. Might see a little bit more going on there because what we ended up doing, well, we added some seismic mirrors, number one. I gotta get those green inlays. Those look good. These are real nice. They're, they're like a cast. Lifetime warranty, you break them. Uh, they'll replace them right away. And the ones out there, they're kind of pricey, but what I like about these is you can actually adjust the mirror most um, of the cheaper mirrors on the market, the mirror itself is fixed. You have to position it, you know, that way. And I just like being able to kind of change it on the fly. Is there anything you added since last, besides the mirror since last time yeah, I've seen? We had a lot. That's what I'm talking about now. Oh yeah, the the, the speakers. The well, speak let's talk about that for a second. So, the speaker under the seat. Just, I had those Rockville, uh, you know, uh, what do they call those pod speakers right there? And they were, they were good. They sounded good, but it just, I needed a little bit more. So I figured, hey, you know what? Let's add some door speakers. So these are kicker six and a half inch marine grade door speakers with just some nice little uh, 
They were actually, I'm all well, kind of expensive, I guess, 30 bucks for the pair, but off of Amazon, um, you can find them. It's just a flush mount. It did take some creativity and some ingenuity to kind of make them work, but I made them work. I'm happy with it. Also, it there's, definitely, a, there's a speed on the, the driver's seat. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. I'll let you show them that, okay? I'm um, definitely happy with the sound quality, though. It sounds a lot better with all of those going now. So now we have the two rears, and then you got the ones in the door right there, basically. So, oh, yeah, now that being said, those are the door speakers. Yeah. Jackson, why don't you pop off that seat and show them what's underneath the seat? Uh, I don't know how. Pull up right there. There you go. Lift it up. Set that off to the side. So, as loud as it was, I still kind of wanted a little bit more. So, I slapped in a, a Rockville SS8 key. It's basically an 8 inch power subwoofer that I was able to fit underneath the seat. I would have rather have had at least a 10, but with the space restrictions and wanted to make sure that I could move the seat back and forth the way it was intended to, that's pretty much all it could fit. Uh, they do offer some glove box options. I just don't know that I want to, you know, uh, give up my glove box yet. And this was by far the cheapest. It was 90 bucks with the wiring kit off of Amazon. So, and you, you know, honestly, it's not too loud, but it definitely kind of fills in the lows a little bit, helps the door speakers out from having to try to do everything. You know, I guess for what I paid for it, I'm happy with it, you know, whatever. So that's pretty much it, guys. iPad still going strong. We hit some gnarly mud holes. Uh, that thing held up the whole way. Everything was fine. I got it out, got it home, cleaned it off, and everything's been good. And what's up, buddy? Did they know about that, um, that, um, you know, that, like, police officer's thing? <laughs> nah, maybe we'll leave that off YouTube, right? Yeah. Thanks, though. So. Yeah, maybe we'll broken. leave. It's broken. Yeah, it's broken. Like, it's the public like, address is what he's talking about, to be it's clear. Um, it works, but the problem is, is you're so close to all the speakers, you get feedback off of there. So it really kind of, kind of a disappointment when that's concerned, because the only way you can use it is by pulling it out and using it outside of the cab. Inside, you just got too many uh, magnetic fields, I guess. But that's it, guys. So we got the door speakers. We got the end of the seat subwoofer. We got the dual battery kit. We got our first service in. Um, I'm still super, super happy with this machine. It's way different than a Razor in a lot of different ways. Um, you know, working it on the hills, stuff like that. You got kind of got to get used to using that transmission compared to a Razor. You're just gunning it and kind of hoping for the best. Um, this it takes a little bit more thought, but you know what? I like that. And we'll see how she holds up. That's really the most important thing. So that's it, guys. Just wanted to give a little update video, and uh, we'll see we'll see you guys next time. Next time, next time we figure something out here, or next time we start adding something, or next time we break something. Oh, speaking of breaking something, so she ain't so pretty anymore. Scratch the hell out of it. Oh yeah, messed up them decals. Scratch the door. I touched it up with just some generic lime green, but it doesn't really match too well. But you know what? I thought about replacing it just because it's brand new, but I figured, hey, it's a toy. Battle scars. Those are stories right there. It's a big bag of memories. All right, guys. Till next time. Like I said, just wanted to drop a little video, see how everyone was doing, and uh, show you guys what we've been up to.